Update. I just found out that my dad who has neglected me isn't my bio dad. Original post. I male 17, mom 38, dad 40. My parents were young when they got married. My mother is a stay-at-home mom and works part-time while my dad is a software developer. I'm the oldest of four siblings. I've been treated like the black sheep in the family since I can remember. Birthdays? Never had any. Just a cupcake from my mom and no presents. I wasn't allowed to have friends over. Christmas was never something I looked to. At most, I would get some socks while I had to look at the presents my dad and uncles and grandparents gave my siblings. New bikes, latest fashion clothes, phones, game consoles, games. You name it, they got it. The same for their birthdays. Big parties. Their friends and family would show up and shower them with gifts. I was never allowed in family trips and vacations. I was left behind to stay with grandparents who were strict in everything I did. And sometimes they would just call on someone else to pick me up while I was supposed to stay with them. My mom got a part-time job when I was 13 and with that, she would sometimes ask if we could just spend a day together while dad and my siblings were out, even though it was just to get ice cream. When I was at home, I mostly stayed in my room and studied. It didn't matter how well I did in school or sports, my dad showed no interest. I was able to get some money by tutoring. That, along with I managed to get a part-time job at food court and a grocery store, meant I spent less time at home. Over the years, my mental health got worse and worse because of maintaining good grades, doing well at sports, working two part-time jobs. My mom helped me find a therapist who has helped a lot. Yesterday, I came home from work late, tired and just wanted to go to bed. I opened the door to hear my mom arguing with my dad and aunt about me in the living room. I could hear my aunt saying that I should be grateful, more grateful towards my dad. Then they saw me in the doorway and stopped. My mom and dad looked like they had seen a ghost. Well, my aunt announced, and in comes the bastard. I was shocked to hear her say that. I know she did not like me and mostly ignored me when we were in the same room. But I got angry and just asked her to repeat what she had said. My dad quickly stopped her, but no, I wanted to know what I should be grateful about. So I asked what was going on. No one said anything for a while, so I asked again, be grateful about what? Being ignored, neglected, abandoned while my siblings are spoiled and play happy family with dad? As soon as I said dad, my aunt just yelled that I was not his son. I was shocked by what she said, and I asked my dad if it was true. He looked at me and just said, I'm sorry. I didn't know what to say. I looked at my mom and she said nothing. I left my room and just started crying. Later, my mom found me on the floor shaking and crying. She helped me up and stayed with me until I fell asleep. I woke up this morning and called in sick. I barely left my room today. I just feel like everything I have done to make the man I called dad proud or just to acknowledge me has been a waste of life. I wish that I had known years ago. Now for the top advice before reading the updates. Wow, I am so sorry. That should not have been hidden from you. At least you could have understood their nasty treatment of you better. Also, that your mother allowed this is, to be honest, disgusting. Why the heck did she allow this? Why did they lie to you? It doesn't sound like they're in North America. And in far too many places around the world, a woman who's pregnant outside of marriage will be treated abominably. I'm wondering if she was pregnant and Opie's stepdad was willing to marry her, with certain conditions, in order to ensure she and her child had some measure of protection. It's all speculation, we can't know any of it, but I sincerely hope OP is able to talk things through with his therapist and work to build a good life that doesn't include all these people who've treated him with such contempt. He deserves better. He didn't ask to be born into this situation. OP, I'm so sorry they've treated you so poorly all your life. I hope your mom is able to tell you more about what happened when you're ready to hear it. Save up and move away from your stepfather and all of the horrible family as soon as you can. And build a good life for yourself. Your life and value are not defined by what these people call you. I apologize for what occurred to you. You must attend treatment sessions and prioritize your well-being. You must leave the house and your poisonous relatives behind. It's in your best interest. Now for the first update. After I put up this post, I had to get out of the house. I want to be alone for a while and the thoughts of ending things became too hard to ignore. So, I called up my best friend and he picked me up. We went for a drive and I told him what had happened yesterday. He just listened while I just cried and told him everything. He knew my father was like this, but not the extended family. I have never seen him so angry before. He had to pull over so he could calm down. I showed him the post and he was silent for a while. After a few minutes, he told me that no matter what, I was his best friend. And he asked if it would be okay if he could maybe talk to his parents about me staying at his place for some time. I said yes. He dropped me off and we got out of the car. We talked for a bit, and before he left, he gave me a hug and just said whenever I felt alone that I should give him a call. When I entered the house, I ignored everyone. First, I would like to thank everyone for your comments. Though I have not responded, I read through all of them. 
Not only have they been helpful towards to see things differently, but to do the best to stay strong until I move out. You are right. This man is not my dad slash father and I will no longer see him like that anymore. I will try and get some answers on why I'm being mistreated. Why after all these years, no one told me anything? And the most important for me right now, who is my real bio father? Is he alive? Does he know I exist? And to clarify one thing, I have no idea who anyone in my mother's side of the family is. And therefore, I have no contact with them. My 18th birthday is in the end of the summer and I will be moving out that day or even sooner if I have the opportunity to do so. Second update. So a lot is happening these few days and I am conflicted about many things right now but I am hopeful that I can start to heal mentally. On Thursday before I left for work in the grocery store, my father, whom I will refer as Kevin, called out to me and I responded by saying, yes, Kevin. And he looked confused because I've always called him dad before. After a bit of silence, I asked what, quite bluntly. He didn't respond and told me it was nothing, so I went to catch the bus. When I got home late in the evening, my mom wanted to know why I called Kevin by his first name. I told her he never treated me as anything close to his son, so why should I call him dad anymore? She had no answer and she told me he was hurt by it. I wanted to scream when she said that. Yesterday, I had an appointment with my therapist and I cannot put into words how much she has helped me over the years. And later, my best friend called me to let me know that I could stay with them if I wanted. So this morning when I woke up, my mom was already awake and making breakfast. I asked her if we could talk alone today and it was important. She agreed to talk after breakfast because Kevin had to go to work shortly after. After Kevin left, she told my siblings to not enter the kitchen for a while. I'm paraphrasing a bit because it was a long conversation. We sat down and I found it hard to get the words out at first. But I told my mom that I can't get over the fact that for all these years how I have been treated and neglected by Kevin at the side of the family and she watched it happen and I need to know why. At first, she tried to dodge the question and gave the same answer as always. But I didn't give up and told her that this was important to me and again she tried to dodge it. So I told her that I can't do this anymore. I was going to pack up some of my stuff and move out. And until she was ready to tell me the things I needed to hear, we would not be on speaking terms. She started to tear up and just told me how sorry she was and kept on saying I am so sorry over and over. It hurt me in that moment to see my mom cry and I tried my hardest to keep my emotions in and I asked her again why. After some time when she calmed down, she told me what happened. When she was 20 and in university, she had a boyfriend whom she had been with for three years. They shared an apartment along with his best friend. They were out clubbing when they had an argument because she wanted to stay but her boyfriend wanted to go home and he left. Both her and the best friend were really drunk and she cheated on her boyfriend with his best friend at the club. The next day she woke up and realized what she had done. So after a few days, she and his best friend confessed about the affair and her boyfriend broke up with her. Her ex contacted her parents and he told them what she had done. Her parents called her furious and told her she was not welcome back home and took away her financial support. So she had to move out. She lost a lot of friends and had nowhere to stay. She had to live in her car for some time. When she realized she was pregnant, she didn't know what to do. She went back to the apartment to find out her ex and his best friend no longer live there. She tried calling and texting them, but they didn't pick up the phone or answered any of her messages. She got a job at a cafe house and there she met Kevin. He was a regular customer and they got to know each other. Kevin asked her out and even though she told him she was pregnant, he didn't care at a time. Kevin's parents were not happy about the idea that their son was dating a pregnant woman and a cheater and threatened to cut him out of their lives. Kevin got scared and was going to break up with my mom but she begged him not to and promised to be the perfect wife and have his kids. They made plans to get married soon after I was born. Kevin never showed any interest in me when I was born but my mom lived with the hope that one day he would. After hearing all of that, I didn't know what to say for a while. After thinking for a moment, I asked if she had at any point tried to contact my possible bio father. She said no and the timeline would place her affair partner to most likely be my bio father but she can't be 100% sure. I asked her if she ever tried to reconnect with her side of the family. She tried to contact them when she was about to get married, but her parents, siblings, aunts and uncles didn't want to see her, so she gave up. I asked her why Kevin was hurt by me calling him his first name. She told me he has been seeing a therapist for the last two years because he has been suffering from depression and guilt. I was surprised when she told me that it started when I was 15. I came home after a handball game where we won and I was awarded man of the match. And I was so happy and excited to tell them about it. She of course was happy for me, but Kevin just said to put my award with others in my room. I started to cry in front of him and ask, why do you hate me? He didn't reply and I went into my room and cried all night. After that, he felt sad. Like something had stabbed him in the chest and it didn't go away. It only grew. My mom told him to go see a therapist. He relented and after some time the therapist got through to him. 
For the past few years, he has been living with his guilt and he has been afraid to confront it. So when I called him by his first name, he realized that he had lost me. The next question is I was afraid to ask, but I asked if he ever abused her. She told me he has never mistreated her. She told me that Kevin has only ever loved her. The only time he ever questioned her about anything was when she was pregnant with my younger brother and he asked for a paternity test which she understood. When it came back positive, he apologized and he didn't ask about my other siblings. The last question. I asked her why I was left with people who harmed me physically, mentally and emotionally while they went on trips and vacations. She was shocked to hear about the physical harm and asked me about it. I told my mom that I never said anything at a time because I was afraid of Kevin's family members when it happened. I told her everything I remember, but here are some of the things they did. My grandparents would scold me loudly and hit me when I was younger. My aunt never spoke to me unless she needed a favor, only to then go back to ignoring me and told me to stay in the guest room. When I was 14, my father took the family to a two-day trip to Croatia and left me with his older brother. He asked me to go to the store to buy some stuff, and of course I said yes. When I came back, he opened the door and took the bags and locked me out of the house. I sat there crying until he had all finished with her dinner, and then he let me in. She cried the whole time I was telling her everything. She told me how sorry she was. She knew they didn't like me, but this was just hate. After the conversation, she asked if I was going to move out and where. I told her I was planning on it. And as to where, I will not tell her because I don't want Kevin to know where I would be staying. She started to cry again, and again it hurt to see her cry. The conversation was long and lasted for several hours, but these are just the main points. After that, I went to my room to clear my head and think. About an hour later, someone knocked at my door and I told them to open. It was Kevin who opened the door. He asked if he could enter and I said yes. It was the first time since I can remember he ever entered my bedroom. He looked around for a bit, looked at a shelf where I keep all of the awards and trophies from school and sports. He was both surprised and sad when he saw the medals from when I did track and field and played football, then stopped when he saw the small man of the match award and picked it up. He held it for a while and started to tear up, put it back and sat down on the bed. Neither of us said anything for a while. I asked if mom had told him what we had talked about. He was still tearing up and slightly nodded his head. I asked him if he was aware how I see him. He nodded again and whispered yes. So you know the extent in what your parents and siblings have put me through? He looked me in the eyes and asked if it was true. I said yes, and he just started full and crying. After a while, he stood up and hugged me. This was both the first time he has ever hugged me and cried in front of me before. I just hugged him back and started to cry. He didn't want me to let go, and he said how he was sorry for the pain he put me through, for the years of neglect, for treating me like an outsider, and he begged me not to move out. When he finally let go, he asked to be given a chance. I told him that maybe with time, I could forgive him and mom, but they had to earn it. But I won't forgive his family for the things they had done. Also, for now he was still Kevin. He is hurt by it but accepted. For now, I am not moving out, but if things go back to the way it was, I will not hesitate to leave and he knows it. We are going to see a family therapist together. I will in the future try and reach out to my biological father, but I don't know about my maternal family side. I'm on the fence with them. I called my friend and told him what happened, and he says the door will always be open at his place. We know each other since we started school, and we both play for the same team. I know his parents well, and they are lovely people. I know many of you want me to move out as soon as possible, but I told them I would like to give them this one chance. And that is what I will do for the moment. Honestly, I'm not scared that things will just go back to how things have been. I've been saving all of my money since I started working. To those who have been sending virtual hugs, here's a virtual hug back and thank you. Thank you for all the comments and support. Now for the last update. Firstly, I would like to thank all of you who have messaged on the last post and privately. I would like you to know that I am safe and I'm at my friend's house. They are willing to let me stay with them long term. These messages have not only opened my eyes, but also to see my mom and Kevin for the people that they truly are. Both of them do not love me and do not care. I have had people telling me stories of childhood abuse and neglect and how they got out. Every time I have tried to talk to mom and Kevin about the abuse, tried asking my mom how she can happily leave me behind and not doing anything about it, they just try to avoid the questions and love bomb me instead of saying that things will change. What really got me was this morning. I got a message saying to ask how my mom never noticed any bruises when they picked me up after travels and vacations. That sealed the deal for me. There is no way for someone who supposedly cares for you not notice. So this morning I got ready to leave and packed up my things. It wasn't that much that I was taking with me. When I was ready, I called my friend and asked him to pick me up when he could and call me when he was outside. When my friend called me, I moved my things out. I let my mom know and Kevin know that I will be moving out. They did not take it well and started to beg me to stay. 
I told them that I couldn't stay there because it was clear to me that they didn't care about me. Kevin got defensive and tried to say that this was my home but I should not leave. I asked him why for these past two years when he was in therapy, he has remained the same. How come even though I tried my best, I was still treated like an outsider? He didn't say anything. I asked my mom why she let this go on for years without doing anything to stop it. Again, she didn't say anything. My brothers weren't home, so I went to say goodbye to my sister. It was really hard because she's the only one who has ever treated me with genuine kindness and love. I talked with her a bit, and when I told her I was leaving, she looked so sad. It was harder than I thought to say goodbye to her. I got in my best friend's car and I just broke down. We drove around for a bit before we got to his place. His dad helped me get settled in the guest room. My friend told his parents about the post. They asked me to tell them everything, and I did. The parents talked in private for a bit and then let me know that they would rather I'd stay with them long term than go back. I'm glad you have a good friend with an amazing family. I'm so sorry your family put you through that. You're better off without them, Obi. Best of luck to you. Your parents as well as the extended family should have been arrested for what they did to you. I'm glad you are now in a safe place. Try finding your mom's family. It seems off that they have not forgiven her after all these years. She must have done something else. Please take care. A huge hug from a stranger. I'm so sorry. And still so happy about the update. I hope you find a safe space with your friend's family. Always remember, your friends can be a way better family than your own. And I think that right now, you are building a new family. Loads of love. Stay safe and far from your family. They are trash. Through and through. Never let them bully you into thinking you did anything wrong. Thank you. The only one I will be keeping in contact with is my sister. Last update. Yesterday morning, with the suggestion of my friend's father, it was best for me to take the week off from school, work, and practice. I can see all my assignments in my school account, so I'm not missing out. Also, he took me to the police station to inform them that I would be staying with them, and to file a written report about the abuse in case they would try something to get me back, also for safety reasons. Yesterday evening, mom called me to see if I could reconsider and go back, but I told her that it was not happening, and I would prefer if Kevin would have zero contact with me. She got upset and tried to guilt me to go back by crying. I'm going to be focusing on my mental health now at my last semester to try and get a shot at a good university. When I feel ready for it, I will contact my mom to try and get the name of my possible bio father and any contact info she has of her side of the family. If that doesn't work, I will try these DNA test sites that have been recommended. Once again, thank you. Thank all for your support and the kick 